In sales, if you can't master three skills, you will never make it. Even if you're not a rock star at everything you have to do, these three skills will take you further than anything else. And these three skills are asking thoughtful questions, listening, and following up. Listening is a skill that you have to work on for your entire life. But asking the right questions, those thoughtful questions that drive people through the process, build up trust, build up credibility, and give you the information you need to close the sale, that's something that you have to be able to do without being salesy, without being pushy, and without being awkward. That's something that you need to figure out or you will watch those sales disappear. Okay, so here are the eight killer sales questions you need to have in your back pocket to get away from the stale, repetitive, scripted conversations you've been having. Number one, can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing, looking to put together, or hoping to accomplish? The reason why I like to start with what you're thinking is it starts to humanize the conversation. It puts you in a position where you are there to learn from the person because truthfully, they don't wanna feel like they're putting themselves out on a limb by sharing their ideas with you. A lot of salespeople often forget that we are the experts and most of our clients aren't. And based on our reaction, we can make them feel dumb for even thinking or considering this thing. So I like to start conversations by really entering in softly and putting ourselves in a position where I'm not judging the outcome. I'm not judging what you're saying or what you're thinking. I'm curious, how did you arrive at that? So I wanna find out, tell me a little bit about what you're doing. Tell me a little bit about what you're thinking for this project. Tell me a little bit about why you think this purchase might be right for you. Like just all of these general questions so that way I'm not putting myself in a position where it seems to the prospect that I'm judging them because I'm not. Question number two, is this something you've done before or are you breaking new ground? Now you can pick your own wording for this, but all I'm trying to understand is, is this something you have an experience in? If you have experience in it, I'm not gonna talk down to you, I'm not gonna be condescending, I'm not gonna explain things to you that you already know. I'm gonna go ahead and skip a few steps. I'm gonna be a little bit more assumptive. I'm gonna use language to say, as you know. I'm gonna to start to bring them into my level because they've done this. Whether they are at my level or not, I'm gonna use assumptive language so that way we're seen as equals now. But if they've never done this before, then I'm gonna become more of a guide. Have you ever purchased a home before? Have you ever gone through the process of a mortgage or a negotiation for home insurance? Have you ever launched a new marketing campaign before? Is that something that you've done? So I love this question because it gauges where they are in the process and you can start to change your language based off of how much they know. Okay, number three, this is a really long question. Do you have a clear idea of what you want and you're simply looking for the best person to help you execute on it? Or are you looking for someone to come in and work with you and do all the heavy lifting for you? I know that's a really long question, but here's why it's important. I have given two possible options. It helps the prospect formulate and articulate where they think they are. They may say that they know exactly what they want and they really don't, but I like to ask this question because it helps me understand how they perceive themselves. If they're stepping into your process and they say, listen, I've done all the research, I know exactly what I want, I know what I need, and I've reached out to a few different companies and I just wanna find out what the quote is. Okay, perfect. So you're looking for someone to help you execute. I'm gonna make this simple, clean, and fast for you. Question number four, this is a real investment of time and money. And you have a bunch of different options, ways, and approaches you could take. How did you land on this one? So when someone is sitting across from me, I don't assume that they're gonna wanna work with me. I don't assume that they're gonna wanna work with my competitors. I assume that they may not even want or need the very product or service I offer. They have so many options. So I'm curious, what led you to think about this, right? It's just the type of question to get dialogue going and uncover those hidden gems in terms of their motivations, what they're thinking, their fears, their desires, you want to learn as much about your prospect and how they think as possible. And so a question like this, it'll help you even qualify whether what you offer is even right for them. And for me in sales, there's nothing more important than being 100% transparent, 100% ethical, because your job is to help them find it the right solution for them, not to simply make a sale. And sometimes the right solution isn't the one you have to offer. So I love this question because most of the time I can direct them to what it is I that I sell and offer, but there are some times where it's so glaring, it becomes so obvious right away that they're not right for your offering, for your product, that you just have to be able to call it on the spot. 
Number five, you obviously have a great product service team approach. I'm interested to know, why did you focus on that? So when you're sitting down and speaking to someone, there is nothing better than taking genuine interest in what they've accomplished or what they have or how they work. And so with every conversation, I look for an opportunity for me myself to get excited about the possibilities. And so when I'm working with entrepreneurs, I'm genuinely excited about what it is they've done. So I, it's, it's easy for me to say, I can't believe that you found this niche in the market. How did you find that? Or you've been operating for 30 years and you're in your second generation? That is really cool. How did you find the transition from first generation to second generation? Look for the opportunity to have genuine interest and then ask. And this helps you not only understand how to navigate the sales conversation in the future, it'll help you shape the pitch, the proposal, the quote, everything. You're gonna dig deeper, you're gonna learn more, and you're gonna bring that into the conversations you're having in the future to close those sales. Number six, what are we looking to accomplish? But now is when I say, listen, this all comes down to something. You're spending all this money. What is it that we really wanna do at the end of the day? And the reason I ask it now is because one, I've opened up enough of a rapport that they'll be honest with me. And two, I wanna know if at this, this end of the day, what it is we wanna accomplish actually aligns with everything they just said, or if it actually contradicts everything they just said. Because more often than not, people don't really know what they don't know, and they say they wanna accomplish this and they wanna do it this way, and, and if you just take them at face value, you're gonna run off and produce all these quotes and all these approaches, you're gonna sell them product, you're gonna hand it to them, and then they're gonna be disappointed. They're gonna get buyer's remorse. It won't work, it won't match up to their expectations. And it's not because you didn't manage expectations, it's because you didn't really catch the fact that they thought they had the answer, and so you went off and delivered on that answer. But meanwhile, the answer was completely wrong. And so at this point, I wanna be able to say, what is it we're really looking to do here? And I dig deep and I make it blunt and I want honest. And then I wanna see if it actually aligns with everything they just said. And if it does, Yahtzee. If it doesn't, now is the time to start to be a consultant, start to be a helper, start to be a guide, start to steer them to what really would accomplish that goal that they really want. Number seven, what are the timelines you're hoping to work within? If you're working with someone who's buying a car and you know it takes three or four days and they're expecting to drive off the lot that day or the next day with it, naturally say, when are you hoping to pick this vehicle up? Because it's a soft way of them saying, well, I don't know, two, three weeks? And you go, oh, we don't need that much time. Or they go, well, I mean, I'm, I, I have a big party this afternoon and I was hoping to roll in with this new vehicle to show everyone how successful I am. And you go, okay, well, huh, we need to get licensing done, we need to do all these things. Like you have the ability to be able to manage expectations because you wanna know their expectations for timelines. And when they say, I don't know, we're just in the research phase, we have no timelines, that's not true. They have timelines, right? Is it, so really, three months, six months, a year from now, two years from now? Well, no, 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 not that long. Okay, so like in the next few months maybe? You can be soft around it but you wanna ask them their expectations for timeline, so either you can judge whether it makes sense or not, whether you can actually deliver, and ultimately, remember that most people don't really know, so they're just making stuff up. Question number eight, we leave it to the end because it's an important question, but it's not one you wanna front load. What type of budget are you hoping to work within? So most salespeople and entrepreneurs get super uncomfortable talking about budget, but budget is just a reality. It's something that you have to be able to address. You don't wanna make people uncomfortable, but it is as important as any other question that you ask. And while you could start this little dance by telling them the ranges that you have, I much prefer finding out from them a general range they're hoping to work within. And it goes two ways. People will either be honest with you and they'll say, really, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure how much these things cost or I'm not really sure how these work, but I'm thinking about working within this range, fantastic. It's either too low, it's either too high, or it's right on. Those are your only three options. Or they say, I, I don't really know. Okay, you don't know at all? I have no idea what these things cost. And then you can lead in with some highs and lows or some ranges. Just think about buying a car, right? You know, like I have, uh, I have a Ram 1500. Well, Ram 1500s range from like 30 grand to 75 grand. So even if you're selling something like a vehicle, then you can easily say, what type of budget range are you looking to work within? But if you can get an indicator of what they're thinking and where they are in terms of range, you are now in a better position to steer them the right direction. And if people won't give you the price, I literally explain that. I explain that these, these projects range in complexity, they range in budget, and I want nothing more than to be able to give you the thing that you want. But it's my job 
to be able to come back to you with the most efficient, most competitive price, best thing, most creative, flashiest, whatever it is that they value. And then people either give you the price range or they don't. If they don't, there's not much you can do. You can just say, well, our ranges work from X to Y. There's lows, there's highs. Are you somewhere in there? But at the end of the day, you cannot walk away from the conversation without having an understanding of the budget range they're in. And most important, this is a question to ask late, deep within the conversation. It's not that you've wasted their time because you've asked all these other things and then there might be a miss. It's because you don't want to front load the conversation with budget because it's not just about budget. It's your job to understand them ask these thoughtful questions, to find out what you need to find out so you can help guide them at a solution that's right for them. You right size the budget, you give them exactly what it is they want and need in the way they want to need it, and your close rate naturally will improve. And so when I say that there are three skills you have to be able to master to be good at sales, following up, listening, and asking thoughtful questions, the thoughtful questions are most important. Nail this and you will be a better salesperson. There's no bloopers here, folks. Got it? Yes, we got it. Uh, shouldn't be drinking before we film. <laughs> you're gonna cut all that out, aren't you? <laughs> there was a long Steve, story. you're gonna cut all that good story. There's a good story there. You're gonna cut it all out. If you wanna take your business to the next level by getting stronger at sales, at marketing, at branding, at speaking to people, at understanding your message, your purpose, and everything you need to do to crush it, well then be sure to subscribe to my channel. I release videos every day. Click on the bell icon so that way you can get the videos when they drop, or you can check out this video right over here. It will change your life.